For the past three years, Sarah Galloway has suffered from a rare disease known as antibody-mediated psychosis. Having not responded to earlier treatments, Sarah faces an uncertain future as she awaits the results of the final treatment available. Sarah's the fourth in the family, so she was the third girl and um, she's always been full of life, very bright, very creative, loves paints, colour and also very lovable in the sense that she was always thinking about other people, always very helpful. At 22, Sarah began experiencing psychotic episodes at Oxford University and had to be admitted to hospital on a section. I had months and months of massively disturbed emotions. I was pretty psychotic a lot of the time. And then there was this random trial that I qualified for. So they weren't looking to diagnose people, they weren't looking um, to diagnose me. Um, but I tested strongly positive for this thing in the blood that causes antibody-mediated psychosis. Dr Clive Kelly from Gateshead has been following Sarah's condition over the recent months. This is a form of autoimmune disease where the body fails to recognise itself and thinks of part of itself as being an infection. So it produces antibodies against that part of itself. So in this particular condition, these antibodies are directed against part of the brain tissue. The disease has not only been difficult for Sarah, but for her family and friends who have had to cope with her psychotic episodes. Her parents have been her biggest support. <laughs> My sister. My sister, yes. <laughs> this is me in the tent. That's when we forgot the frame to your um, cot, so you had to sleep in a suitcase for two weeks. <laughs> I remember sitting and talking to my mum in a restaurant about it afterwards, because we'd had like a year before that where I'd been given psychosis as a diagnosis or so many different answers that it was quite a relief, but it was also quite scary because the treatment for antibody-mediated psychosis is quite different. Sarah has already tried three unsuccessful treatments. Research into the disease is limited, so her last option is a form of chemotherapy known as rituximab. The best case scenario would be to continue to keep a control very good with rituximab. Worst case scenario would be if she um, relapsed and didn't respond to repeated treatment, which would then mean we would have reached the end of our knowledge base about the best way of treating this condition. As we know from past experience, this condition would prove fatal in a substantial number of people. Sarah has been recording video logs in the final month leading up to her test results. She reflects on the effectiveness of the treatment and her emotions towards coping with her condition. There is this side to it. Most of the time to other people I can seem quite together, to friends, family, strangers. Most of the time when I'm by myself. It's just too much. I mean, this is real me. One of the major symptoms of Sarah's condition is that it causes severe psychotic episodes which have in the past made her try to commit suicide. As a result, she can very rarely be left on her own. I don't want to die. It's never had that intention. I've never planned it. I've never built up to it. It's literally just like I'm in a dream and it just seems like a good idea in that dream. And then I wake up and I'm like, what is going on? Is happening to me and it took me a long time to work out how to feel about things like that that have happened because I did it I did do it but it wasn't me it's just a weird thing to have to try and live alongside to be able to prove that the latest treatment has been working Sarah must get a blood test to show if the antibodies causing the psychosis have been removed. I always get nervous for blood tests and especially for the antibody blood tests because it's so 
so important that that becomes negative. It would totally transform my life if this treatment worked. So at the minute I live at home, um, I'm not able to work, I've just come out of hospital, I'm not able to concentrate on things, I'm not able to remember things, I'm not able to sequence so often I go into the shower with my clothes still on and I get a bit confused as to <laughs> why I've done it the wrong way around. But um, if this treatment worked, it could give me up to 12 months of relatively normal life. So we're not sure what's permanent brain damage and what's um, what can be reversed. So, you know, time will tell, but I'm very hopeful. To keep herself occupied, Sarah loves to paint. She has organised an art exhibition to showcase her work recently completed during her stay in hospital. She is hoping to be able to raise money for the Encephalitis Society. The exhibition is going great, much better than I'd anticipated and it's just amazing to see so many friends, so many work colleagues, so many people from church and it's just such amazing support. I've sold some, um, I've got commissions so I'm going to have to do some more and it's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful, everyone just seems so positive. So I called the exhibition Butterfly Brain because um, I've had a problem with my brain and um, it means that I can't concentrate on one subject. So that's reflected in the art that I've produced in that it's a lot of different topics, it's landscapes, it's flowers, it's animals, it's portraits. Sarah was able to raise over £500 for the charity, but celebrations don't last long as she enters the last few days of waiting for the results. I've got a very busy week coming up, so I'm going down to Oxford tomorrow with my mum. I'm getting my blood test results, hopefully next week. So things are moving on really well, actually. I mean, I've had a cold this week, but it hasn't knocked me out. It hasn't made me feel really bad. It hasn't started any episodes. It's Sunday night, um, I think. And I've just had my first episode in over a month they don't know what they are but they're like little psychotic episodes um, where I scream and I cry and I get covered in snot and tears and still a bit shook up to be honest because it only happened like 10 minutes ago but I thought I'd do one of these It's just really scary. <laughs> and it just makes me wonder if the drug's gonna run out or wear off. And I don't know honestly what I'd do if that Sarah suffered from her first episode in over a month since starting the rituximab treatment. With her blood test results only three days away, her parents are preparing for the worst case scenario. For us, we've been here so many times before where she's got better to a point and then she kind of drops back into illness. If she improves, then that would be absolutely fantastically good. Um, and I'm sure we'll be able to manage with that. Um, if she declines again, we will need some help, but I, I feel like we, we, we could manage that too, so I'm just waiting to see and not get too far ahead, I think. A few months after the treatment, she is finally able to receive her results. If they come back as positive, Sarah will face an uncertain future. However, if they are negative, she can expect a long but hopeful road to recovery. Body test. Is, that, is that for us to just um, forward to Oxford because it just shows that it's negative? It's negative? 
Yeah. Seriously? Well, it says negative. No, yeah, that's it's good. It's fixed. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't really know how to interpret it. No, that's really good because it's been positive for about two years. Fab. Okay, all in hand then. Yep, brilliant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Bye now. Okay, bye Sam. Oh god. It's actually negative. <laughs> oh. I kind of built myself up for it not to be. Oh. Oops. I'm calling them again. I'll just put that down. <laughs> yeah, no, that's amazing. It hasn't actually been negative since I had plasma exchange in 2015, 2014. Oh, I'm really hot. <laughs> no, that's fantastic news. I think that kind of, it's physical proof that the, the treatments worked or, you know, however temporarily, but oh, <laughs> I'm so happy. Man, I'm on such a high now, but I've just got this whole new wave of hope about my life. <laughs> just this, this incredible desire to want to live it and live it really well, not just live a normal life. So it's a good step. It's a really good step. And yeah. <laughs> Bye.